Hey guys, Michael here again. I'm going to work today on practice test 10. I've gone over practice test 10 before, but I'm going to answer or demonstrate the correct answers for a number of questions per the request from my friend, why cringe 24? That's a great question. Why? Uh, who asked me to go over some of the mistakes that he or she made on passages, uh, the reading passages from test 10. So I'm going to get right to it here. Um, I, I love doing this because it's a great way to review uh, individually for students. I can't do it for everybody, but you know, hit me up and, and I'm, I'll, I'll see what I can to give you some feedback on your own particular work here. Uh, so let's go to the tablet and take a look at what happened to Why Cringe 24 on practice test 10. OK, we're going to start off with the uh, first one is always fiction. Down here in this case, there's not a lot of information. I'm not going to do a full preview. I've been through my strategy, which is to do a hard read of the uh, introduction take what i can out of i get nothing it's just a novel uh, i don't even know the, the it's, it's published by this i have no idea what this is uh then i'm going to do on the fiction i'm going to just in a preview for topic senses and main um you know main ideas i guess is you can pick it up but really about you know things like um proper names for characters place setting all that kind of stuff so it's august 1938 miss gravy spivy Da, da, da. She was in Paris and London, near East Africa, Barnyard, Barnard, something college there. Barnyard College uh, it was there, she told us, trying to mission life. I got to see something important there. There's the dog who's getting up and around here. That's my boy, Macduff of Fife the Fifth. Uh, that's spelled F I F T H, by the way. His grandfather killed Macbeth. That would be Macduff of Fife the Third. Uh, they sent her to Three Step Georgia, Miss Spivy, blah, blah, blah. When Mavis Davis is another character there. Let's get that straight here. Mavis Davis, Spivy, Miss Spivy, Dr. Janet Miller. And then I'm going to read a little bit more carefully the last few things here. We all hung there for a minute thinking hard until Mavis Davis, as Ms. Davis spoke up. She means like the three kings rode to Bethlehem, Mavis said, fold her hands smugly and reserve the great desk in the back of the room. Miss Spivy made a mistake right then. Oh, here we go. Miss. So here's here's some sort of contrast to what went on before. Good information. Instead of beaming upon Mavis is a kind of congratulatory smile that old Miss Chandler would have bestowed on her for having enlightened. So old Miss Chandler must have been the other teacher. Seems this is a teacher. Uh, Miss Pivy simply said that's right. And this is giving us a little information the work prior. So it's about the Great Depression, the WPA. If you know that, you know that. If you don't, you don't. Then I'm always going to do a preview of the questions. I uh, see question number one is, um, you know, whatever, main point question, no good information in there. Question number two, we have to pay attention to three step. Uh, we can infer from the, okay, here's information. We can infer from the passage that some of the people at the train station regard Miss Bibby's comments about the Georgia heat. So something about a train station and the Georgia heat. And then I know that three um, has the, four has the answer to three. So somewhere in here, and that's going to be lines two to 25, so it's pretty compact. That's good. I'm looking for, again, remind myself, finger on my head. Some people at the train station regard Miss Bivy's comment about the Georgia heat in a certain way. All right, whatever. Uh, Miss Bivy likes she's fruitful in her mission on line 26. I could, could go back. She does that for a reason. Uh, the interaction between Ralford and Miss Bivy got to pay attention to Ralford, whoever that is. This tells us in the third paragraph, the narrator most likely suggesting that by describing Miss Bivy as having wandered and marched into another. So she wandered in one and marched into another. So there's something going on there. Uh, do I have, um, no, it's not a paired pass questions. According to the passage, Spivy ended up in three step. All right, why does she end up in three step? Okay. Uh, she announces that she's seen camels and the students reacted to that. And then there's evidence for that. And there was, there's, uh, I remember, the, the, um, I think the students kind of reacted to something there here. Was that about the camels? Oh, yeah, it was about the camels. We could not camel, she said, whole caravan of camels. And so, uh, you know, that, that information, that's line 80 to 95. So I'm going to be thinking in terms of when I go back now and actually read this thing, I'm going to be paying attention to 80 to 95. OK, so I'm going to um, bring up the, uh, uh, the text itself on one screen. This is the, the problem with working on online. And I'm going to look at the questions on the other here. So I'm kind of flipping back and forth. So what I want you to do, well, I want you to use paper and booklets. Use the practice test book, please, please, please. So student did well. Now, what I would normally do, I would go back and read it now. And while I read, I'm going to try and answer questions, right? So I'm going to be reading blah, 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 blah. I see something about um, the train in Georgia here. 
and I believe her remark irritated some of the people. So they were irritated. So I could answer that question here. I think while I read, uh, the people were irritated about her comment about the Georgia heat. But we're going to skip that because student got all these correct. Yay, yay, yay. Passage uh, number seven here, excuse me. In the third paragraph, when the narrator most likely suggesting that it said wandered and marched. Okay, third paragraph, wandered and marched. Third paragraph. Where are we? One, two, three, up here. Uh, she wandered. Okay, so in the midst of trying to find her true mission in life, she wandered, and then it says she marched somewhere. And see, let's see what happened after a lecture by famous John Dewey, who was talking about this famous, famous Dewey was in his 70s, maybe. Da, 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 da. Um, da, 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 da. It was this lecture, so it was in coffee, Miss Vivian marched. Oh, she marched. Okay, so she wandered into a lecture and then marched, I guess, after the lecture, marched into the teacher's college and signed up all aflame. So we get the difference between wander and march. Uh, and then let's go back to the question itself and eliminate. So uh, Dewey, we got Dewey, we got Dewey. After two years spent studying, her initial encounter with Dewey, I can pay attention to Dewey. So she wandered into a lecture by the famous John Dewey. Da, da, da. He was in his 70s, but still liked to chat with students after the lecture, sometimes over coffee. It was after this lecture and subsequent coffee that she, okay, so it was afterwards. It was after this lecture and subsequent coffee. So she had coffee with Dewey that she marched into the teacher's college. And then two years later, she went into the WPA and was sent to the poorest, darkest, most remote and forgotten corner of America. So that tells us what is about three-step Georgia here. All right. Now, let's eliminate. So she wandered into Dewey's lecture and she marched into the teacher's college. Knowing Mississippi was a very confident ability to teach and still her sense of determination. So Dewey, knowing that she wasn't kind of, she has nothing about her ability to teach, so it's not that, eliminate that. Um, talking with Dewey over coffee made Miss Bivy realize how excited she was to teach in the poorest. Um, all right. Now, she didn't know where she was going to go, did she? So when, when we look at this, we want to eliminate by um, by heirs here. She, when she talked to him, she had no idea she was going to go do that because that happened afterwards. So that's a chronological thing. After two years studying, she was anxious to start teaching, being in charge of her own classroom. So that's the, the two years is after the lecture. And, the, and she marched into the college before. Remember, we're looking for what is the narrator most likely suggesting by describing as having wandered and then marched? Okay, so I, I, I'm going to limit it down to D. It's got to be D here, but let's see what D does because I found errors in all of these. So I could just move on, frankly. If I trust my elimination. But anyway, let's see what's going on here. Ms. Dewey's initial encounter with Dewey's. Okay, she wandered into an initial encounter. Ac happened accidentally, but ultimately motivated her to her decisive action. Thus, she was marching in to there. So we move on from there. So the student got number seven, and it looks like a student got number nine wrong. So um, nine is an evidence. So the answer to nine is in 10. The student got 10 correct. Uh, so we could kind of, let's go ahead, just answer this anyway, 10. I want to see what the evidence is on 10. So 10, um, the answer is going to be uh, B, it turns out. So student got that correct. So the evidence, 85 to 86. Let's go to 85 to 86. 85 to 86, okay. So that's evidence for something. So what am I looking for? In the passage, Ms. Vivian announces that she had seen camels. The student's reaction suggests that they are something about how they reacted to her having seen camels. So the evidence to that were, what are we looking for? The student's reaction to her having seen camels, 85 to 86 tells us. We all hung there for a moment, thinking hard. Ah, so the reaction is to think hard and, and also hung there. So that suggests that they didn't know what to respond. So were they delighted? No, it says nothing. That evidence says nothing about being delighted. They hung there for a moment thinking hard. So the evidence we're doing B says nothing about being delighted. It says nothing about being fascinated. They were just thinking hard, thinking hard. That doesn't tell them what they were thinking, if they liked it or not. If you don't know the word baffled, we can't eliminate. And they're worried. Were they worried? Hung there a moment thinking hard. It says nothing about being worried. So again, I'm going to trust my elimination 
and I'm going to eliminate D, A, and, and B, which leaves me with baffled whether or not you know what that means, you can eliminate down to it because the evidence does not support A, B, and D. Okay, uh, move on to the next question, uh, I'm sorry, next passage here, student did. The conundrum, um, how scientific innovation increased efficiency and good intentions can make our energy and climate problems worse. This is not an academic um, paper because uh, it's not published by an academic press. It's self-published or the copyright's owned by the author. So I know it's probably an expository. Um, it could be about a, you know, it's about um, science, whatever, it doesn't make it an academic paper. So I want to look for how the idea gets built up. And so my preview for an expository, looking for author technique, looking for author purpose, I'm going to skip the preview here here and just go straight to something that I believe is really, really important when you're doing these um, is to read the last thing carefully, then preview the questions, then go back and read the text. One of the arguments that cities inevitably make in promoting transit plans is that the new system by relieving automobile congestion will improve the lives of those who continue to drive. No one will ever, no one ever promotes a transit scheme by arguing that it would make traveling less convenient. All right. Even though from an environmental perspective, inconvenient travel is a worthy goal. All right. Here's our thesis. Make driving a hassle and, and you'll save the environment. OK, now I'm, I'm going to skip the whole preview and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to go straight to these um, questions here. Student got numbers. It looks like 12. Uh, let me see. Just make sure I got that right. The student got 12 and 15 wrong. Um, 12 and 15. OK. So I'm going to skip the charts for now unless we need them here. Chart, chart, chart. Always look at the chart, chart, charts. 12. Which choice best supports the idea that the author assumes that all things be equal, people would rather drive than take mass transit? This is what I call a flag question because the evidence is within the question. Notice this is not a subsequent um, evidence um, for this one. So we have to find the evidence within the question, which is a little bit harder. So we have to go through and just um, find out. We're reading from five to 20, oh, lines one to 22. So it's pretty compact, which is good. But I'm gonna put my finger on my head or some students like to look up the ceiling and say, what am I thinking about? Right, what choice best supports the idea that the author assumes, so it's something that the author assumes, all things being equal, people would rather drive than take mass transit. So we're something about the, uh, the author's assumption that people would rather drive than take mass transit. We're going from one to 22. So um, I, I should have this in my head while I'm doing my initial reading. Whoops, wrong way. Going to the next passage here, one to 22 down to here. Building good transit isn't a bad idea, but it can actually backfire. New transit buses merely clear on the highways and lanes for those who would prefer to drive. OK, so this is that people prefer to drive. A group that historically has included almost everyone with access to a car. So I think was one of my evidence here is one to five, one to five um, to a car. OK, so that might building to a car, building all right to a access to a car. This is a. OK, now what am, I'm going to remind myself. What am I looking for again? I'm looking for all things being equal. The author assumes that people would rather drive than take mass transit. This says nothing about mass transit. So I'm going to do a soft elimination here. I'm going to go, no, it says nothing about mass transit. It says people prefer to drive. I get that, um, but it doesn't say anything about mass transit. Maybe we need to infer that, but I'm going to do a soft elimination because I'm not sure I haven't looked at the others yet here. Five to eight, two to overall. To have environmental value, new transit has to replace and eliminate driving the scale sufficient to cut energy overall. Okay, this only talks about mass transit. It says nothing about people's preference to drive. So I'm gonna do a hard elimination of B. 15 to 18, but they're productive, 15 to 18. Eh, we have a lot of that means, blah, 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 new transit systems, blah, blah, blah. Just assume we've read this, but too productive here. This is um, B, this is C, but they're necessary because you can't make people drive less in the long run in the long run is that's not all things being equal by taking steps that make driving more pleasant economical productive but what's necessary uh, elimination of traffic lines because you can't make people drive less in the long run by taking steps that make driving more pleasant economical productive so we got to make driving annoying does that tell us that all things being equal no it doesn't at all because it's saying that if we make driving annoying people would rather drive the trick man it doesn't say anything about mass transit anyway so it's not really about their preference to drive they're just saying we have to that these things are necessary to reduce traffic lanes to make people be annoyed enough um, to make driving taking steps to make driving by economical and productive because you can't make people drive less in the long run by taking steps to make driving more pleasant yeah, OK, it kind of does, but I don't like I don't this doesn't talk about the mass transit in there, so I'm going to skip that one. I'm going I'm to hard eliminate 19 to 22, one to commutes, one to commutes. 
One, two commutes. This is D. One of the few forces with a proven ability to slow the ultimate suburban growth has been ultimately fine tolerance of commuters for long, annoying. Okay, does that tell me that people would rather, all things being equal, one of the few forces with a proven ability to slow the growth of sprawl has been ultimately finite tolerance of commuters. No, it doesn't say, tell me, it doesn't answer this question. Which choice best supports the idea that the author assumes that all things being equal, people would rather drive than take mass transit. This is, this is just saying that people have a tolerance, a finite tolerance for annoying commutes. It doesn't compare it, so I'm gonna eliminate that. Now I've eliminated all of them, except there's a soft elimination on A. So let's, let's go back and see what A tells us. Again, tap myself on the head. I'm looking for, all things being equal, people would rather drive than take mass transit. Building could transit. Oh, there is mass transit in here. Isn't a bad idea, but it can actually backfire if new trains and buses merely clear space and highways for those who would prefer to drive. Ah, it's A. I missed it when I first saw it because I didn't pay attention to good transit, um, but everyone who has a car would rather, people would rather drive. Okay, so that pretty clearly states that um, this, uh, the idea that all things being equal. So between the choice, the other one's all, make things not equal, right? Making driving um, less convenient, making driving um, less tolerable, making driving more difficult. So this is the only one that does it, so I go with A. Okay, now we got number 15. 15, based on the passage, how would the author most likely characterize many attempts to improve traffic? Now this is interesting, the student got the evidence ones right, but the um, the what the evidence provides in the, in the paired questions wrong. So 16, the student correctly got C, 31 to 40. So let's see what 31 to 40 does. How would the author most likely characterize attempts to improve traffic? Now, this is a lot of lines, 31 to 40, but let's see what it does. 31 to 40. If in a misguided effort to do something environmental value, so the author says that, what, what, what would be a misguided effort to do something environmental value? Municipalities take steps that make long distance commuting faster and more convenient. So by making driving faster or more convenient, that's a misguided effort to do something environmental value. Adding lanes, blah, blah, blah. So we have this dash here. It's just giving you examples of how to make driving, uh, commuting faster and more convenient. Traffic control measures make it possible for existing roads to accommodate, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Here's my other um, dash here. We actually make the sprawl problem worse. Now, how far are we going in the evidence? We have to go only to 40. I think it was to worse. Okay, so in other words, it's saying that if we make driving more convenient, that's a misguided effort to do something of environmental value because, right, we actually make the sprawl problem worse. So whatever the sprawl problem is, um, it, it, it might it, we might have been introduced that earlier. I'm not sure. Um, if you don't know that, maybe we need to go back and talk about sprawl. I'm not sure if it's in there, but whatever the sprawl problem is, it gets worse if municipalities do things to make driving faster and more convenient. So let's go back to the question. Does C, tell us that they're doomed to fail because people like driving too much to change their habits. It doesn't say that. It's talking about making driving more convenient. So I'm, I'm going to eliminate A. Overestimate how tolerant people have long commutes. No, it doesn't talk about that. It talks about if in a misguided attempt to do something environmental value, they make driving better, easier, quicker. They're well intelligent, but ultimately lead to, yes, that's exactly what it says. I'm not gonna eliminate it. They will only work if they make driving more economical and productive. It doesn't say they'll only work if, economic and more productive. And we know the author is, is against making commutes faster and more convenient. So we're not gonna um, to improve traffic. He doesn't even want it. So this is the only one that's consistent with the, um, the passage itself. 15, then we got 20. Um, so, oh, the data in figure one. All right, you got 20 and 21. I hate chart questions. They make my head explode and I get them wrong. Let's see how I do on this one. So what am I looking for? Do data in figure one support or weaken the argument of the author of the passage and why? So does figure one support, we support. Okay, so we know what the author wants. And remind myself, go back to the to the end of the whole thing. Um, does the author want to, it wants to make driving less convenient, right? Because that's good for the environment. Make driving less convenient because that's good for the environment. Let's go see, does figure one support that? So what does figure one do? Uh, effect route reduction root capacity reduction. So vehicles on an altered road change in regional traffic proportion. Okay, so we're whatever that is. Oh, change in traffic. So traffic is before the altered road. Okay, so traffic's down, 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 down after altering. 
So before altering, after altering. So altering the road, and what are they doing? They're effective route capacity reduction. That's the alteration is reducing traffic. So yeah, this does support it because people don't drive as much. Let's see what the possible answers are. So we're going to get rid of weaken. I can go with support on, on, on this one here um, because the data show that merely moving drivers out of cars can induce traffic. Merely moving drivers out of cars. This is nothing about moving drivers out of cars. So that's wrong. It has to be B. Now we can test the other ones here. The data show that in some cases road alterations lead to greater traffic. No, they don't. Oh, on surrounding roads. Greater traffic on surrounding roads. Yeah, the traffic was. Yeah, it was up here, up here, but that's not the point. The author's point is that you know, we want to get people to stop using the roads because it makes it inconvenient. So, you know, that may be true. See how they build a true statement, but it but it doesn't answer the question correctly. So does that weaken the argument um, support or weaken that it supports because the data show that reducing road capacity leads to net reduction in traffic. Do we have a net reduction in traffic? Change in traffic down, 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 down. OK. All right, it does reduce it. All right, so we're going to go with that. Let's see if we can eliminate D. Show that the drivers tend to be brief. No, it says nothing about how long that goes. So we get rid of that here. So very good. Um, so we're going to go. Let's see. Student got 21 wrong. Um, let's see. 21. Okie dokie. One moment, please. All right, based on, oh God, figure two, the engineer survey were most skeptical. All right, so they tend to do this like perspective shift. So engineers, engineers, skeptical. Now what does skeptical mean? That means they doubt. If you don't know that, I'm not sure if you can get this one right or not. So if you're not, you know, if you're, um, our, our friend here is an Egyptian national, um, so why cringe 24? So um, let's just assume you don't know the word skeptical, see if we can get this here, but um, it's helpful if you do. They were skeptical of the idea that in the event of a reallocation of road space, drivers would change something. So let's just go and see what it tells us. So in the event of a reallocation of road space, let's see what two does. So could a significant road space reallocation result in some people changing? So this is a survey of engineers predicting, they're predicting driver behavior. And so they survey, they said, so if, I guess it was things that if you change, um, changing a significant road space reallocation, reduce space, people would change the route of their journey. So they said that most people would change the route of their journey. When they travel, a lot of people would change when they travel. Their means of traveling, some would change. How often they would change. This is what the engineers predicted. What is done in one trip, a journey destination, they're driving, they're not going to change their driving style. So that most of them felt that here's a 50% felt they wouldn't change their driving style and whether they car share, they said they wouldn't change. So they're going to change to the least about car sharing and the most about the route or the, I'm sorry, they're going to change. Yeah, they're going to change the route if the, if the road space, does that make sense? Okay, what do we got here? So in the event of a reallocation of road space, drivers would change when they travel when so we got when they travel here that's a yeah they said they'll change they, they they felt that they would change when they travel so could be their means of traveling that's the second one so it's when is more than their means so so we're looking for the extreme so it's probably not going to be b there right um because there were were that they did this more how often they make a journey uh, so often this is um, this is A, this is B, this is C, so that's even less. Get rid of that one. Their driving style. This is D, D right here. Their driving style. So that's the least. So I got to go between the most and the least. Now I got to analyze this. So engineers surveyed were most skeptical of the idea that in the event of reallocation of road space they would change. So it all depends on this word skeptical. I don't know if you can do it or not. If you don't know what it means, but if we assume that it means that they would support the idea that in the event of a reallocation of road space, drivers would change when they travel the most, it would be A, but skeptical means to have a doubt about it. So it goes um, D, their driving style, would they, they think people wouldn't change the way they drive. Okay, I, I hope you can see that here again. If you don't know the word skeptical, sometimes you're just kind of stuck on that. Now we're gonna go to next passage. We're gonna go to 22 to 32. 
24. Okay, I'm going to um, skip the preview here again. Just make sure that we're getting the concluding um, sentences the most. So Alston used da da da, the lit up GS arm, but by normal subjects, both the sense and the cortices are active only. So in normal, I see in normal, so I got a comparison, but only that. This solidify. All right, this, so this, all this stuff about whatever happened to GI and CT fibers, this solidified the notion that CT fibers convey a more emotional quality of touch rather than the conscious aspects, aspect that helps us describe what we're sensing. CT fiber, okay, so here's our conclusion. They, CT fibers, we picked up that they're nerves, specifically provide pleasurable sensations, okay? Now, here, here's, a, here's a situation I just want to show you that if you, if you, can bring in any prior knowledge about stuff. It helps you process the stuff. When I was a kid, I cut my nerve. I have a, um, a big scar here still, and I don't have pain sensation on this side of my finger, but I have touch. I can feel soft, pleasurable CT fibers are working, but my pain signal fibers um, are broken. So I could actually staple my finger. I used to do this in the classroom just to freak out kids. My wife made me swear I would never do it again because I got an infection, but um, <laughs> that's not a smart thing to do. But in any case, I can't feel pain on this side. I can on this side of my finger, but I do have the, the sensation of touch and pressure. So um, I kind of understand this passage a little bit just because of that personal experience. If you have that in anything that you do, please use it. Let's get to the problems the, that the uh, student got wrong. Okay, we got active on 24. That is line 18 active. So I want to I want to look at the before I look at the possible answers. I always want to in the reading section. I always want to consider the text. OK, so gentle person might be active. OK, so the whole sense is uh, Harkin, Gothenburg, that, 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 that. These people wondered if slow fibers responsive to gentle pressure. So slow fibers responsive to gentle pressure might be active in humans as well as in other mammals. So what is this saying? If slow, they wonder, what do they wonder? They wondered if slow fibers, which ones? The ones that are responsive to gentle pressure might be active in humans as well as other animals. So be active. I think what it's saying, and they wondered if slow fibers would be active in humans as well as in other mammals. So I guess it means present or working. So now I can go back and, and what is working? Slow fibers, these are nerves. So we have to deal with nerves. This is our physical thing. So let's go to the elimination here. Uh, present, it, it could be, does in both mammals and humans, attentive. No, nerves are not attentive. People are, so get rid of that. Movable, nerves are not movable. And nerves are not restless, only people are. So these provide not a physical state, but a, an emotional state. Um, oh, this is physical, but we're not talking about moving nerves around here. So we have to go on 24. We have to go with A. Now 25. Oh man, we got two vocab. Now you know, for an Egyptian um, native Arabic speaker, I assume, not sure. Um, you're dealing with a new language here, but I want you to see what I did. I looked at this word and I said, okay, this is describing how slow fibers are, which are nerves. It's not describing a, a, a an emotional state. So wrong. It's not, this is an emotional state. It's wrong. It's describing a physical state. Can a physical state be present? Sure it can. Let's try it on capture 24. To capture. Okay, so we're doing the sentence. Using, again, we're going to anticipate. Using a technique called micro in which you, okay, so what is it? What is micro something in which a fine element is inserted into a single nerve to capture electron impulses? All right, so that's parenthetical. So whatever. Using microneurography, the scientists were able to measure. Oh, wait, this is the word we need capture, isn't it? So I can't get rid of that. So using microneurography. To capture. So what did they use it for to capture electrical impulses? So they take a whatever a filament is, they insert it into a single nerve. Wow. So it's obviously a filament is something that's really small, can go into a nerve. And what do they do that for to capture its electronic electrical impulses? So they're getting, they're putting something into a nerve to capture whatever that means, its electrical impulses. I guess they put it in there. They want to measure the impulses or they want to observe them, whatever they do. But that's a physical thing that they're looking at. Let's go and, and eliminate. They're not going to occupy it. Okay, that's in, that's like a, a state of um, control. So they're not controlling the nerves. They're not seizing the nerves, the nerves, excuse me. They might be recording them. Are they influencing the, the nerves? I don't think so. They're just trying to 
see measure how quickly they fire so it's not about influencing them we have to go with c to record them i hope you can see how that one works as well um, now let's see what else the student got wrong um, 20 oh student got 25 correct got 26 wrong well i hope you see what i did there i'm going to keep this in the video all right so oh man we got evidence again so student got the evidence question correct it looks like yes evidence question correct but the other one wrong so let's see the evidence correction to 27 needs to be b so we're going to go straight to the evidence 26 to 28 they to delayed 26 to 28 they showed this is B. They showed that they, what showed the scientists using this microneurography, always pay attention to the, to the pronouns because we can bring that into this. They showed that soft stroking prompted two different signals, one immediate and one delayed. Okay, so they, using this microneurography, the scientists showed that soft stroking prompted two signals, one immediate and one delayed. So does that answer a question about something about the, this is a very vague, I, I can't eliminate based upon the question itself, but does that, that they have, they showed they, the scientists showed that, or the results, that soft stroke can prompt two signals, one, one fast and one slow, one immediate, one delayed. Stimulation of body extremes, it says nothing about body extremes, eliminate. The presence of human hairs, it says nothing about hairs, eliminate. Gentle pressure is sensed not only by fast fibers, but by slow fibers. Was it gentle pressure? That soft stroking prompted two signals, so it does. It's it's got to be this one, uh, and it's not talking about the speed at which nerves fire is dependent upon. It is about the speed, but as they didn't talk about the change in the in the pressure. They showed that it's just it's just a soft stroking prompted two signals, one immediate, one delayed. Okay, so there we have um, 26 um, needs to be C, uh, and I, I'm fascinated by student getting the evidence correct. That's awesome, but you're not eliminating carefully uh, from the evidence. Do the evidence first. If you can jump on the answer in 26, fine. The first one, that's that's fine with me. But generally speaking, this has the answer to this. All right, now next set, uh, question 20. Let's see if I can not waste your time doing a question you got right. 32, let's see what 32 is. Okay, let's go down to 32 here. Now, this is the last one, so I want to pay attention a little bit to the last paragraph here and remind myself what we saw. So they did this studying of GL's arm. Um, da, da, da. They, they did the, they tracked the cortices reaction to the different um, stimulus and, and, and what all that did, it, this solidified the notion that CT fibers convey more emotional quality of touch rather than the conscious aspect, the conscious aspect, I guess like thinking about it, that helps us describe what we are sensing. CT fibers, it seems, specifically provide pleasurable sensations. Let's see if that helps us on this, on this elimination here. Um, brain cortis is shielded from nerve. No, it's not shielding them. They were measuring them. They're, when they're, okay, humans experience an emotional aspect of touch when they're exposed to it. Okay, so the CT fibers give the, it didn't say the CT fibers provide pleasurable sensations. So humans experience an emotional aspect. The emotional aspect is the pleasurable sensation. So it could be B. Nerve fibers sense pain. No, it's not talking about suppressing them. Conscious aspects of sensation. Uh, oh, God, ignored. Get rid of that. Got to be B. Hope you see that. It's not about ignoring them. It's just saying that the conscious aspect helps describe what we're sensing. It's just saying that that's the notion that the, the more emotional is describing how the CT fibers convey an emotional touch. That is when they send the pleasurable sensations, and that's when they do that in response to a stimulus. Okay, 